You look dazed. What are you thinking about? Microbrands on this episode of Adventures with Time. Hey, maybe I'll find Raquel Welsh in here. Whee! Did you get the Raquel Welsh reference in that intro? It's from the 1966 movie, Fantastic Voyage. It's about a crew that gets shrunk along with their submarine down to microscopic size to enter and repair brain damage of a scientist. One of the stars was Raquel Welsh. Now, on to watches. I want to talk about microgram watches on this episode. Now, several other YouTubers have published videos on microbrands. So why do I want to discuss them here? Well, I received a comment on my State of the Collection 2019 video, which I published just about a month ago. I'll leave a link up here to that video. The viewer's thought was that this, my collection, was, quote, another collection with too many similar uninteresting watches, also too many micro brands, unquote. And I don't mean to complain about this comment at all. I'm always interested to hear insights from other viewers and collectors, as I believe that is how we learn and grow in this hobby. There are actually two parts to this comment that I truly wanted to explore with the viewer. So I did reply asking specifics about why they thought most of my watches were similar. As I've received other feedback admiring the diversity of this collection, so I was a bit confused. But it's the second part of this comment I want to examine with you. That is, opinions on microbrands. I've stated before that my current collecting strategy is twofold. I've discussed this strategy in another video to which I'll leave a link up here. First, I want to explore different types and styles through affordable watches. By using affordable watches, the impact of a wrong decision is minimized, I think, and one gets to play with a large number of watches. With the limited financial impact of affordable watches, I think one can make quicker decisions. You don't have to mull over a purchase for months and months. The other track being the acquisition of luxury watches that will hopefully be in my collection for the long term. These watches, for me at least, require a deeper level of consideration and are naturally limited to perhaps one purchase a year due to my affordable funds and the lengthy investigation process that I feel I have to go through. So how do microbrands fit into my strategy? I view microbrands, for the most part, as falling into the affordable category, although some can get quite expensive, as you may know. Many micro-brands offer good value proposition. I won't try to put an exact definition to micro-brand watches. For all I know, there already is some official definition. I tend to use several attributes to characterize what is a micro-brand. First of all, low production runs. Next, outsource manufacturing and assembly. Third, online-only presence. And of course, independence. Now, I don't consider a maker to have to meet all of these attributes to be considered a microbrand. It's a general characterization of what they are, in my mind. I'm sure there will be those who want to argue about these attributes. I think that whether it comes from a company that is called a microbrand, a large independent watch company, a conglomerate, or even a custom watch shop, 
the bottom line should be always to me is to watch something I like and at a price I think is fair. By the way, a good way to learn about different micro brand watches is right here on YouTube. I like watching videos from Jody of Just One More Watch channel here on YouTube. He seems to focus on affordable watches, which for the most part are from micro brands. For example, he recently published a video on a micro brand watch launching on Kickstarter. I'll put a link to that up here. Although microbrands don't get the economies of scale that large production runs afford, they are able to keep their costs down by selling either solely or primarily online, thus eliminating ADs which require their take of the margin, and by being online they don't have the cost of a brick and mortar store, and they tend to keep their marketing costs to just online information. Of course there are some microbrands that do go through distributors and even be found in non-online stores. From my experience, your best option is to purchase a watch during their initial launch period where they often offer early bird discounts. Now some will say that these launch specials are just a marketing scheme to get you to purchase their watch in that they usually sell out during that launch period meaning that this is the price they really want for the watch and it will never be sold at that higher price. Maybe so. My intention is not to disparage any micro brand or imply unethical marketing practices. After all, there have been occasions where I've purchased one of these watches during the launch period and have been able to sell the watch at a higher price later when I lost interest in the piece. My point is that you should purchase a watch you really want and that you evaluate the watch based on what your cost will be, not what the watch may sell for later in time. I also feel that due to the small production runs, micro brands tend to pay closer attention to quality control. After all, a few complaints about poor quality can ruin a micro brand as word will get out to the watch community. Micro brands usually want to be noted for their attention to detail in the finishing process. Also, small production runs allow micro brands to experiment with designs and technology more than large brands who have to satisfy the common interest of many buyers. I noticed several micro brands will launch a watch in several colors and material options, one of which might be special, like a meteorite dial, or a non-steel case, or some uncommon dial color. Through low production runs, they can afford this as they only have to sell a few of these to break even. Now, I'll be the first to admit that there are a lot of micro brands who create subpar watches. Either they are simply replicating existing designs or they take shortcuts in the manufacturing process. But you can certainly find micro brands who produce great watches with great value. One brand I particularly like is Zelos. I've purchased two of their watches, three if you count their partnership on the Aragon Maelstrom bronze watch. I have found that the quality of these watches to be superb. They sometimes offer their watches with a choice of movements to provide the buyer with price options. An interesting take on a micro brand is Islander watches. And my last video was on their Islander automatic diver, which I recently purchased. A small discussion occurred in the comments to that video as to if these should be called a new watch brand or a modification of the existing Seiko SKX line. If you view the video from Long Island Watches where they discuss the launch of their own watch line, you will know that he clearly identifies these as SKX alternatives. I will leave a link to that video in the description below. Even with the Islander model having updates to the SKX, should these be considered a new watch model or brand? Again, my personal opinion is, I don't care. It's a watch I like at a good price. So why should I care if it has a Seiko or Islander brand? 
but I realize this is fodder for discussion, and I'm sure there'll be more comments to this video. So my take on microbrands is really twofold. First, they offer the watch community design options and pricing, which we may not be able to get from the larger brands, hence the ability to try watch styles at a cost that won't distress you if you discover you don't like the watch later. But secondly, and just importantly, one certainly needs to perform due diligence on any purchase. Look at the history of the brand and what people have to say about their previous watches. And look at reviews of the watch you are considering. Ask the maker questions about any information lacking in the description. I've had to ask where a watch is manufactured. Who performs the quality control? Even how they handle warranty issues. Try going to one of the watch shows attended by microbrands. You get to experience the watches in hand to see how they look and feel on your wrist. And as you can tell, I am of the opinion that microbrands offer a great channel for collectors. Some collectors even focus on microbrands. Some avoid them like the plague. I simply treat them as another option for discovering new and intriguing designs at a reasonable price. What are your thoughts on microbrand? Let's hear them in the comments below. Have you had good or poor experiences with them? Who are your favorite microbrands? I'd like to know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.